everyone and welcome to today's demonstration where I'll be showing how to do this elegant nail design and again it is surprisingly easier than you might think because we are using decals uh, for at least the pattern nails and um, as you can see here I've done that also on my own manicure and I just love the 3d look that you can get from the combination of the uh, gel and the liquid stones that I'll show you here in just a minute. Now I decided to get a little more organized because I have a ton of decals and stickers and foils so I bought this photo album off of Amazon and a little five by seven that you can slip things into uh, each individual page here. Very nice for especially the larger decal sheets from EMI. And as I was going through all of them, I came across my scroll patterns here and decided to try them out. It's been a few years since I've attempted to uh, paint with these. And so these are the two that I used on uh, the samples uh, that I showed at the beginning. And we'll choose one of those to do for our demonstration today. Now some other suggested supplies. These are the two items that I used to make my uh, thick paint. The white raffinade and the liquid stones. The liquid stones really is needed to help you create this 3D more of a carved look. Uh, it just really is helpful in um, that it doesn't the gel doesn't settle at all. It basically stays where you put it. Now for that nail, it's super easy. I'm using the Blooming Gel from Mia Secret. Our base color is Estimio N10. It's a lovely neutral uh, color along with Better White. For the decals, uh, I will be using an acid-free primer. This will help with adhesion. And a matte top coat is what I used to apply once the decal was applied uh, before I started painting. For the shiny nails, the top coat I did use Accent Shine On. For the sugar nail, I used Elizabeth Craft Silk Microfine Cool Diamond. And for the pigment nail, I use Social Claws uh, Precious. Now, unfortunately, I did not know this when I filmed it, that she no longer stocks this. Apparently, it was terribly expensive to manufacture. So I've linked an alternative in the info section. Now, it it's pretty important to have the right brushes to work with. So I've used Royal Precision and Perfect Line are the two that um, uh, one for... Uh, getting into the larger areas and the smaller one for getting into the more fine details. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our first nail. These Estimio um, gel polishes are terrific formulas, great self-leveling, uh, self and most of them you can get away with just doing one coat for a lot of these. So that's what I've done here, and I'm going to go ahead and pop that into the lamp. It has a very, very uh, light tacky layer, very sticky, uh, but not oily and slippery. And I, I'm leaving that before we apply our uh, decal. It will actually help the decal stick to the nail a little bit better. So we cut out our chosen design and I've got a little bit of water here in the bowl. Just going to pop that in there for about 20 or 30 seconds and going to bring that out. Just kind of blot off a little bit of that water and then you can see how easily it slides off the backing. These are quite thin so you do want to be a little careful with them. Uh, you can tear them if you're not too careful. So and just slide off enough that's going to help you to see where you want to position it at first and then you can slide off the rest of that backing. Okay. 
Now there's no way really around getting around some wrinkles. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of working with a curved surface. So just try to work out as many of the wrinkles as you can. We don't want any air bubbles either, so be sure to work those out. It might help to get a softer silicone tool to kind of squeegee across the top of that uh, decal towards the uh, edges like this. And once you get those wrinkles worked out, this might be a little more work when you're actually working on the nail. Just be aware of that. You're going to, I like working with a sponge buffer just to um, kind of file off the excess around the edges. And this is where we use our primer around the edges to make sure we don't have any lifting. And just a very light touch across the top of that nail. And now we're ready to add the matte top coat. Again, I'm using the Joe Hens No Wipe Matte. And we'll cure that. And once again, these are the two products that I mixed together to get the thickness of the paint that we're going to be using. And I've done some when I was practicing a little earlier. I already had some mixed up. Uh, as long as you can, you store that in a in a dark, cool area. Uh, you can um, keep using your. You don't have to throw away any paint. You can keep reusing that. So. It's kind of a two to one ratio, I would say, with the to two parts of the liquid stone and one part of whatever color that you'll be using. And it's kind of like whipped cream where you want it kind of at stiff peaks to where it's going to hold your lines really well. It's not going to spread on you because we're not going to be curing as we work. And I'll show you why here in just a moment. So again, I'm using the Royal Precision uh, brush and the perfect line. Uh, you can also use the Fine Lakes Detailer uh, if you have that. That's uh, an option as well. I, I'll be using that a little bit later in the video. So again with the Royal Precision, though, that's the brush I'll be using for the wider areas, the more uh, large areas, and then I'll come through with the um, smaller brush to get the finer lines. Now you don't want to just dunk your whole brush in there. You want most of your product on the tip and you want to lift up, especially if you're going to have like pointed areas like right here. Just dip your brush in and kind of pull it up so it creates a little tail and then place it on the nail and sweep it down. I'm not going to worry too much about bringing that all the way down to create more of that uh, stem area. We'll get to that in a few moments and you'll just come through and keep adding your gel and just sweeping it down now if you want to create some more definition uh, just take a a lint free wipe wipe off the gel and come through and kind of you can bisect any areas or um, you can also do the same with the perfect line brush come through and that will give you a more defined more carved look I suppose and again we're using the small detail brush with these very small lines I like to just get the line down. Of course, it's not going to be even. And my hand is a little bit shaky here. The line's not particularly even, but I will come back and go over that. Lightly kind of frosting the top of that line that I just did to smooth it out. And that area there where I just kind of messed up and had a little bit go over the edge, I'm actually just going to create a little bit of a area there that actually wasn't part of the decal you don't have to follow these exactly and that kind of helps with 
um, if you find that it might be a little too difficult to create a certain line somewhere. You have artistic license here. This really is just kind of a guideline for you to follow. I really do like this perfect or the uh, royal precision for creating these larger leafy areas. You can either come through and define your areas after you've got everything down or you can do that as you move along. I like to kind of lay down that little tail at first and then kind of press down on the brush to create that wider effect. I'm just coming through and adding a little bit more gel in these areas where the stems kind of curve around and then I'm using the smaller uh, fine line detail or the lace detailer brush to come in and define those stem areas a little bit more kind of straighten those lines out a little bit. Now at this point since I've got the design finished I'm going to come through and create those a little bit more 3D effect by adding some more of this gel and this is where you'll see that the liquid stones added to it really helps with that uh, carved 3D look and I'll just come through I like to add it around some of those um, not all of them just a, f a few here or there Add a little bit more around the edges, maybe down the middle of some of these areas, just to give it more of a 3D look. And once you're happy with your design, you go ahead and cure that. There is a slight uh, tacky layer, um, especially using the liquid stone, so go ahead and remove that. And then your design is finished. So again, it's not really difficult following the pattern and having the right brushes will definitely help create uh, your desired design. All right, we're going to do our blooming gel nail again using the N10 for the base. We'll get that coat down and cure it. Just going to place a little bit of the better white on my palette. Now you don't want to use a lot of the blooming gel unless that's the effect that you're trying to go for. I didn't want it to spread too much, so just a light layer 
light even layer and using the detail brush here just putting a dot and then drawing the line from the top to the bottom I liked how this kind of created almost like a flowing fabric kind of look so this one again was super easy and it's fun to watch those colors spread out and see what it looks like there you can go through and add a little bit more whichever is your preference this gel would be great for creating you know the marbled look that's kind of what this looks like a little bit too once you're happy with your design you can go ahead and cure that to the manufacturer's directions go ahead and top coat that and cure it and there is our finished nail again super easy to do and a very nice effect now again we're going to do our pigment nail here and as I said in the beginning unfortunately uh, Social Claws no longer stocks this as it was very expensive to manufacture so the closest and most similar would be the Angel pigment which I have left a link to down below so check that uh, info section and uh, as with any pigment we're doing our no wipe top coat over our color and curing that precious really is a gorgeous kind of mother of pearl effect it was in her opals collection and so silky smooth I, I don't have a pigment that is as silky and as smooth as this completely effortless it was and it is very mirror it unfortunately doesn't really come across in my lighting setup here all those uh, pinks a little bit of green golden color and it's actually quite shiny very mirror I remember when I first got this pigment and I used it over a similar base color just in all all my nails were done in that I got so many compliments uh, when I wore that manicure so but you will get a similar effect with Angel so we'll go ahead and top coat that and then we'll see how beautiful that shine is I wish the color showed up better on film it really is a gorgeous color all right we'll move on to our last nail which is our sugar nail I've already done one uh, coat of the N10 I'm uh, coming through with another light coat which I'm not going to cure we're just going to sprinkle that cool diamond micro glitter into our nail and again once this is cured and we dust off the excess the Estimio uh, gel polishes have an almost non-existent tacky layer so you don't have to wor really worry about uh, any tacky layer once you scrub off the excess there and again it's not really coming through on camera but the the sparkly diamond effect is really nice so here's our finished set I hope you can see how easy that really is to, uh, to do as always I will leave links to all the products that I used below so please check the info section again I can't stress just how important it is to have the right brushes for this it'll just make your life a whole lot easier and uh, again links below to those 
If you liked the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. I would appreciate that. I'll respond to any comments as uh, soon as I can. And until next time, I will see you guys later.